You're listening to Welcome to Eloma, a podcast for highly ambitious dreamers who get shit done. I'm your host, Kylie Peters. This is a space where we talk about managing cash flow. So uh, today it's just going to be me, solo cast, and we're going to talk about managing cash flow. Now, I picked this topic because I've had dozens and dozens of conversations with small business owners uh, recently and throughout the year. And uh, it seems like it's a pretty fair statement to say that this year has been, this year being currently 2023, has been a challenge for a lot of small business owners. Anybody who's making under a million in annual revenue, um, at least from what I've heard, has been a bit of a challenge. And we know as small business owners that cash flow is king. Um, I mean, it's like oxygen to a small business. We can't breathe. We can't operate without it. And, uh, you know, going negative cash flow means you can't pay payroll. You can't do anything. And not paying payroll is illegal. So, you know, how do we, how do we weather that storm? So I have, uh, I'm going to share a couple of ways that I hope, you know, maybe spark some new ideas to help manage cash flow when things are a little tight. And, you know, if you want to use these when cash flow is not so tight, by all means, uh, please feel free. So let's talk about this. Let's see, how many do I have here? Um, I've got, I've got, I've got a couple. Let's go. All right. So a couple of ways to pad the bottom line, because ultimately that's what we're talking about when we're talking about cash flow. As you probably already know, you can either make more or spend less. Now, making more oftentimes is uh, dependent on other people. And we know that we can't, we can't control what other people do. We can't control if they choose to purchase from us. Yes, there's plenty of things that we can do in terms of sales strategies and marketing campaigns, et cetera, to try to get them in the door. But ultimately, we can't make them give us money, nor do I think that you should. So don't threaten people. <laughs> um, but if you're listening to this episode right now and you're like, I've got more money than I know what to do with, good for you. Congratulations. Um then managing cash flow may or may not be a relevant topic for you right now. However, you can have tons of revenue and be spending all of it. And then managing cash flow is maybe still a problem. So, you know, whatever's relevant for you. So that's one thing to keep in mind. You can't control what other people do, but you can control what you do. And oftentimes you are or should be in control of how much you spend. So... That would be my first recommendation is cut your spending. And sometimes, depending on what your situation looks like, that might mean cutting your compensation. Um, but it doesn't mean that you can't make any money, right? So I'm going to riff on this for just a second. Um, now, as the owner you know, you have to make some tough decisions. And like I said, sometimes that might mean paying yourself less. Uh, and I'm only saying that because sometimes we just have to do what we have to do, but I don't want that to be misinterpreted as, oh, um, use that as a crutch for not making the other hard decisions that you have to make. So just know that it's one element to be considered. It's not the only one and there's lots of ways to go about it. So some ways to think about potentially paying yourself less if that ends up being your course of action is, um, you know, if you're on payroll right now, decrease your payroll because not only are you, are you having to pay the money on payroll, but now you're paying all the taxes on top of that and payroll administration fees. So that adds up big time. Now, you probably can't do that for your team unless you're reducing their role or letting them go. But for yourself, you can change your compensation structure. In some cases, that might look like taking yourself off of payroll entirely. Now, that may or may not be a good move for you, but hear me out. There are other ways to pay yourself, right? You can pay yourself in reimbursements. You can pay yourself in profit distributions. Now, depending on the way you're set up, if you're an S-corp, 
You can't take profit distributions if you're not taking payroll. But if you have incurred additional expenses that your business can therefore reimburse you, now granted, no, it's not straight up cash and you've already accrued those expenses, but things like a home office or car payments or things like that can add up. And those are ways that you can still get money out of your business without paying taxes, without paying payroll taxes and, and kind of shimmy along in that capacity for whatever period of time you need to. Um, the flip of that is if you want to continue to keep yourself on payroll, then you can choose not to get reimbursed reimbursements. Um, you can also think about paying yourself uh, through the Augusta rule. So the Augusta rule says that you can rent your house out to your company 14 times a year and get paid uh, an hourly rate that you would normally get paid or it would have to pay if you rented out a different location and the company can pay you as an individual back that much money uh, tax-free. So again, you got to figure out what is right for your cer- circumstances. But if looking to reduce your compensation and specifically payroll is something you're considering, just keep in mind there are other ways that you can get money out of your business legally, reducing your taxes, reducing your payroll fees, etc. So that all adds up. So just keep that in mind when it comes to making more or spending less. Um, That also applies to how you compensate yourself. Um, The other thing I'd say is like, if you have not recently reviewed your credit card bills, review them because you are probably paying for subscriptions that you didn't realize you were still paying. I know when we did this exercise a couple of years ago um, from my agency, we realized that we were spending $800 a month on stuff that we no longer needed. So that was a huge savings, obviously. Um, So just, you know, make sure that you're going through and either getting refunded or reimbursed uh, expenses that are no longer relevant or making sure you're ending subscriptions, et cetera, because that just, again, eats at the bottom line. Okay, so you know how to spend less. Be mindful, spend less. Uh, It'll take some of the burden off of the bottom line. Additional ways to help with cash flow is explore additional potential revenue streams, right? So a couple of things to think about here. Maybe there's different partnerships or affiliate agreements. You know, who would be great referral partners for you and how can you incentivize them to send you new business? And maybe it goes both ways. It could be one way. It could be a mutual affiliation referral agreement. Um, We all love the idea of passive revenue, right? Passive revenue is this elusive thing, in my experience, at least. Um, I'm still not quite sure on how to build truly passive revenue and have it be successful, but people are doing it and I'm sure it's possible. I'm not going to be the person that gives you the golden key to passive revenue, but it may be something you want to explore. Maybe there's something that you can build once and sell it a thousand times and that frees up some time and space to be able to do higher ticket items. That might be a thing. Also, uh, take a look at leveraging technology to replace humans. I don't know anyone right now that would say finding good help is easy in any capacity. Um, Finding the right people to help build your business is so hard. There's just so many things that go into it. And so, and, and everybody only has so many hours in the day, right? So even when you find the right people, make sure you're utilizing their limited time to the best of their ability and you know the highest use case. So what that could mean is taking a look at all of the repetitive, mundane things that you're having a human do right now and seeing how you could leverage technology to do that. We made the investment in HubSpot earlier this year, which is not a cheap platform by any means. But in doing so, it ended up taking over probably 40% of one of my team members' roles and we were able to reallocate their time differently. Um, And that way, you know, HubSpot or whatever platform or platforms you decide to use uh, is not going to give a two-week notice, right? Or hopefully not. So you also don't have to worry about training and turnover and that disruption that that creates for your business. So just make sure that you're utilizing your the talent that you do have in the best way possible 
and consider tapping into technology if it makes sense. I would also say, can other people help make revenue? Do you have other billable team members? Um, A lot of times people in general want to do the work, but they don't necessarily want to build a full-blown business because they don't want to do the business development. They don't want to do the marketing. They don't want to do all of the backend stuff, right? So there's opportunities out there for really talented people to help you do the work that you do. And you can take a a cut of that because you know you're building the business, you've brought in the business, and they get paid what they want to get paid, and everybody's a happy camper, right? So that could be something else to consider. You know that can that can really add up. And then also make sure that you are not selling time for money. Um, and I know in some cases in certain business models, this is just the business model, but I really encourage everyone listening to consider how you could potentially shift that. Because if you are selling time for money, you can only ever sell a certain amount. And you can make the argument that you'll price yourself higher, which is true to an extent, but at some point you're going to you're going to max out. Um, and you also need to make sure that you give yourself a break. You know, you don't want to be working 80 hours a week doing really emotionally draining work. Um, so you just want to be mindful of selling time for money and, you know, are there group programs you could offer? Are there, um, different ways you can build your product high services? Can you sell solutions instead of time so that you're making a higher profit margin because you've already figured out how to solve that problem. And now you can solve it for people faster with less of your time at a higher rate. So just think about different ways that you can be exploring other revenue streams. Secondly, or I don't know what number we're on, but another thing uh, that you could consider is calling in the banks. So uh, let me preface this by saying I am not advocating for anybody to get knee deep in debt or in over their heads because that's suffocating. Uh, You don't want to be swimming in debt. It's not a good look on anybody. It doesn't feel good. It's, It's tough, right? But that being said, some debt is better than other debt. And sometimes we just need to weather the storm. You know, I've talked recently about life and seasons and seasons in life and seasons in business. And sometimes we just need something to get us from point A to point B until... X, Y, Z kicks in, um, you know, just to keep the lights on type of thing. So if you are finding yourself in a position where you're looking for additional funding sources or lines of credit or loans or credit cards, et cetera, don't beat yourself up because I'd say probably every single business owner I know and have talked to has some form or concoction of all of those things helping them to run their business. Um, Now, again, I'm not advocating for taking on extensive debt, but there's also some things that are just smart, right? So like, for example, if you don't have a line of credit right now, you should get one, especially if you don't need it, because it's a lot easier to get when you don't need it. And you should also make sure you check out the interest rate on it, because some of them are insane. Um, You know, looking for something that's like prime plus half a percent is, is really nice. I mean, prime is pretty high right now, but even that is, is going to be better than prime plus, you know, 1.5, 2.5, whatever it is. Um, Looking for something with a low interest rate and ask for as much as you can get, like ask for as much as you can get a line of credit you are only going to pay interest on what you use. And with a line of credit, for the most part, the only payments you have to make are interest-only payments, right? So you're not having to make monthly payments like a loan to pay down the loan. You are making interest-only payments on what you are actively using. So you could have a $100,000 line of credit, not use a penny of it, and pay nothing. But you at least know you have an extra $100,000 available to you should you need it. Now, a $100,000 loan, you're going to start paying payments on that right away. Um, And so if you need that much money right away, 
then sometimes that might be better because sometimes those loan interest rates are lower. Um, But you just want to make sure that you're not paying more than you need to be paying, especially when it comes to interest. Um, Also, I should say, I am not a licensed financial professional in any way, shape or form, but all the things I'm sharing are things that have either helped me or have helped my clients. So take them uh, with a grain of salt, but do not consider this official financial advice. This is just sharing information I have discovered. Um, Okay, so you've got lines of credit, you've got loans. Um, Again, I would prefer a line of credit over a loan, but it depends on what your need is. Uh, Another thing you might want to think about if you own a house, you might want to think about a HELOC, a home equity line of credit. So um, it's been my experience that those typically have pretty competitive interest rates. And while, yes, in theory, you're supposed to take out a HELOC to pay for home renovations and home improvements, you can also take out a HELOC to help cover whatever other expenses you have, such as your business. Um, Now, that again is a line of credit. So your interest only payments, just keep in mind when it needs to be paid off. So that could be an option as well. Uh, The other thing that I would consider before even thinking about any of the things I've already talked about is a 0% interest credit card. Um, Now, again, especially with a credit card, because those interest rates can jump up to 18, 20, 25, 28% or higher. Make sure if you're going to start start tapping into a credit card that you have the means to pay it off before you get nailed with those super high interest rates. But if you can get a 0% APR credit card and you have the means to pay it off in the 12, 18 months, et cetera, that is the, uh, the introductory rate, that's a 0% loan. You're not paying anything on that. So honestly, that's where I would start is find a 0% interest credit card and make sure you can pay it off within the timeframe. Now, the other thing you could think about if you get to that end of that timeframe and you have not paid it off, maybe you look at a line of credit, maybe you look at a HELOC to cover that so that you don't get, because they're not going to be 30% interest rates, right? They're going to be six, eight, 10% interest rates. So you're not getting hit with a 30% credit card interest rate. Now, here's a trick. if you have multiple credit cards or multiple bank account, well, credit cards with a certain bank, you can potentially, you'll have to check the details of this with your specific instance, but you can potentially stack credit. For example, if you have, say you have ABC credit card with name your bank um, and you have a $30,000 limit on it right now, and you open up a 0% APR credit card with that same bank, and they give you a $20,000 limit. You could, in theory, double check these for you, but you could transfer that $30,000 to your $20,000 0% APR credit card. And now your 0% APR credit card turns into a $50,000 credit limit, essentially a $50,000 0% loan for the time frame of that offer. So just think about how you can move things around. I've I've been feeling like I've played Tetris with money recently. Um but there's a lot of creative ways to go about it. The biggest thing is just making sure A that it works for you, that the time frames work for you, and B that you're mitigating the interest rates because the interest rates are what's going to kill you, right? So just be mindful of that um Again, prime is really high right now, but hopefully, hopefully that will drop. Uh, and the other thing I would say is, um, especially when you're thinking about funding, is make sure you're asking yourself what you need the money for, right? Like, sure, it's nice to have a little cushion, a little cash cushion, um, and it's nice to, you know, just sleep a little easier at night, which I absolutely recommend for everybody. But if it's interest accruing, do you need it right now? Like, could you take out $10,000 now instead of $25,000 now? Because you really only need $10,000 right now. That's going to save you in interest, right? Even if it's just a line of credit. Um, If it's 
to cover payroll, then, you know, a credit card is not going to, not going to cut it. You're going to need a HELOC or a line of credit of some kind because you need cash, right? Um, Also, like if you have contractors that you are paying, can you pay them with a credit card versus um, cash out of your bank account? You know, like there's different ways to go about that. Um, How long do you need to cover these expenses for? Is it 30 days? Is it six months? Is it a year? Is it the next two years? You know, you want to think about how long term that is because um, that might help dictate what type of funding source you look for, just keeping in mind the time frame. Uh, so there's that. The other thing I would say is take a look at, you know, you should always know your numbers. I did a whole nother podcast on knowing your numbers, but make sure you know your numbers. One thing that I have found to be helpful is understanding what comes out of payroll and like who uh, who gets paid in cash. You know, we use Gusto. And so we have a lot of um, contractors that are set up in Gusto and they get paid in cash, right? Um, but we have other vendors that we use that will accept credit cards. So again, it's like, where, where does it go? Um, and also asking if it makes sense if there are payment plans available, you know, if you know you're going to get the cash, you just don't have it right now, ask the question. Um, I have almost, I don't think I've ever been told, no, there's not a payment plan option um, if I've asked. So just ask, right? Um, The other thing to think about if you're, depending on the line of work that you're in, is especially service-based entities, if you're doing, if you're providing a service you know, could you ask for, you know, a bigger initial deposit to help with cash flow issues, right? You know, you're going to do the work. Um, you want to be mindful about making sure you don't overcommit and you don't get yourself in a position where you have to pay anybody money back. But could you ask for the full payment or 50% or 60% or whatever it is upfront just to help, you know, wean that gap? And then in closing, what I will say is this stuff is not easy. Entrepreneurship is not for the faint of heart. It is not easy. There are a lot of hard decisions, a lot of hard decisions, but that's part of your job. That's part of your job is to make difficult decisions. I mean, if, like everybody says, if it was easy, everyone would do it. Um. And sometimes it seems like everyone tries and then it doesn't last long because they're not willing to make the hard decisions. Just keep in mind that when the going gets tough, it's still your job to keep the company afloat. If the company is not afloat, you have no vehicle of which to compensate or pay yourself or anyone else. So sometimes we have to make those tough decisions. And also keep in mind that while this this line of work, this business oftentimes can feel very much like an eat what you kill kind of situation, acknowledge that you are human and we need sleep and rest and peace of mind and to avoid heart palpitations. So only you can make the right decisions for your business, but don't forget that you are almost without a doubt your business's most valuable asset. And if you are not taking care of yourself and doing what you need to think straight and to live a healthy life, you're not doing yourself or your business or your team any favors. So do your best to examine that and and find the balance, but be gentle on yourself. And again, a call back to life has seasons, business has seasons. If it's tough right now, that's temporary. I wish I could tell you how long it'll last. I can't, but just know it's temporary, just like the good things are temporary too. So be gentle with yourself, but also make sure that you make the decisions you need to make and and you're not avoiding things because those oftentimes cost us significantly more. All right. Well, I hope those are some good tidbits or at least help you to think differently about managing cash flow and finding funding to keep things, keep things afloat. Um, 
If you have any questions, as always, please feel free to reach out. You can find me at kyliepeters.com. Also, rain9, R-A-Y-N-E-I-X.com. And uh, I'm always happy to help. Happy to help. So thank you very much. To continue learning how to better build your business and make your vision a reality, subscribe to the Welcome to Eloma email list at welcometoeloma.com.